Okay. Okay, I think we're, let me double check this. Hey guys, Heidi Easley here, Texas Art and Soul. And this interview is about hope and inspiration. So I have Shanna here, and I'm just going to go straight to it. Shanna, tell us who you are, what you do, and a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, Heidi, I want to thank you for having me today. Um, I found you through one of your videos uh, when you interview interviewed Akiana, and I feel so honored that you're even asking me to do an interview with you because um, I think we all do have a story to tell. And my name is Shanna Farrow. Uh, I was a I am a business owner of the Candle Cottage. Uh, it was in Nederland, Texas at the time, and I started the business back in 1998. Uh, my husband and I had our, our son, Dre, who's now 20, and uh, basically the last 20 years, that's that was my art medium was wax, um, creating candles, and I had a storefront, um, I had a factory, full, you know, employee, uh, running, helping me run the store, and along the way, you know, we had growing pains, of course, um, so at some point in the middle, um, you know, I had received some business advice to expand, and uh, I wouldn't say that it was really set up for success. I, you know, invest, I built a building that was 6,000 square feet at this time, and it was about a $400,000 investment. So once we got into this location, after three years of, you know, my bills quadrupling, I was paying about 14000 a month, um, all my working capital was gone. So oh that kind of uh, was a, <laughs> it was a roller coaster ride for quite a while. Um, and I ended up closing in 2014, but there's a lot of information in between. I'm kind of giving you the, the kind of speedy version of what happened there. But uh, so I moved, you know, I moved uh, everything back to our house. That's where I originally started. The Candle Cottage was in our backyard in our first home that we lived in. And uh, just, I spent a year like a mad scientist trying to perfect my product. And no one taught me, uh, you know, we learned along the way, my husband and I. Um, and so after closing in 2014, I had just enough money to build a little barn. Um, my husband put AC in it. And I, for the last, um, this Christmas was my first time not to pour a candle for the holidays for customers in 20 years. It was very hard to let go. Oh, but wow. I knew that it was time because I feel like God's moving me into a different direction right now. Um, but I was poor in, in the barn for the past four years, you know, just to pay a bill and to keep my candles available to my loyal customers that loved my blueberry cobbler. <laughs> that was my yeah. best seller. <laughs> yeah, blueberry cobbler. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And it's hard to tell you short versions of all this because my story is really long. I mean, it's been 20 years, you know, of things that I, you know, learned. I kind of look at it as, um, my schooling, you know, life's a lesson, and I reflect back on all of it, and there are things that I've learned, especially in my faith as well. So I think it's time for me to uh, talk about it. You know, I haven't talked about it, and your video, you, it drew me in when I heard, I know you talk about it now, and I know you're probably okay with me saying this about your bankruptcy. You know, I have business debt. Um, we've chosen not to do the bankruptcy, not that I hadn't thought about it. We have thought about it. I have thought about it. Um, but, you know, we're, I'm, I'm making it work. And I work for myself still. My, my bills run me about 1200 a month just in Candle Cottage debt. So I am able to, month to month, God provides. Sometimes I'm not sure where it's going to come from, but it happens. And so uh, it led me into other art, you know, another career in permanent makeup. So that's what I've been spending the last year on, you know, developing and mastering the skill of that. Plus, we've also invested uh, again in me. And uh, so I had to put the candles down because I'm fully financially and physically and mentally invested in the permanent makeup right now to make it a career. Um, but I've got to have art on the side to keep me sane, girl. <laughs> you know how that is. <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh. I love that you said that because um, I, I, art is healing. It is so healing. And I don't know the people that are out there, whatever medium they choose. I know mine's painting. I know you do several different kinds of art. You know, it's just so, so healing. So I know, um, you know, yes, the choice of a bankruptcy or not a bankruptcy, you know, that's very, 
very great of you to like know like this is my debt and I gotta you know take care of it and I know that puts pressure on you so maybe um how can you inspire somebody out there that maybe feels like they have started a business or invested and they have all this debt hanging over them like like how do you how could you inspire somebody else that's maybe in that position to keep going and to not give up uh, first I feel like you've got to have your faith you know because it is an earthly thing money is an earthly thing and um, I, I kind of look at it as you know you look at all these college students that go to school all these years and they acquire all this debt when they get out of college they've got all this debt to pay for you know starting out their new career so I'm kind of using the mind thing and I'm thinking of it you know I've been in school for 20 years <laughs> I've been learning because I didn't go to I didn't go to college for business. I did go for cosmetology, and I did go for a little while. I was going to do fashion retail and merchandising, but um, I uh, I just try to look at it in that way where, and I trust that God has a plan and He does continue to provide for me. And sometimes uh, we try to make things happen quicker than than His timing. Um, so I feel like He told me to be still. The last four years I, I literally my couch became my best friend to the point where I almost drug it out to the bonfire and lit it up because I got tired of being on the couch but I was it was like I was in a cocoon in a way you know and he was he was changing me and he I was in isolation because we, we live on two acres I don't have I have neighbors but we're, we're so spread out you know we don't have visitors and stuff all the time and so um, I felt him changing me and I and I knew I needed to go through it as painful as it was and on top of that a creative block I was having a creative block for like the past eight years oh, wow. and that was more painful than anything and I'm sure as you as an artist know that you know painful block I mean the block of you know your art just coming through like things just come through naturally and whenever that there's a void there it's it's so uncomfortable and so my faith walk in all of this and I feel it is my duty to bring this up because he's he's really opened my eyes to some things lately. Um, when I had, you know, I moved my business four times. I was uh, behind our house first when Drake was born. Then we moved to a commercial location for the first time, which behind our home, I had developed 1,500 customers backing into our ditch to get our candles in a, you know, residential neighborhood. So I was a believer that if you have a product that somebody wants they're going to find you to get it so I, I, I did venture out into a commercial location and um, we were there going we went through growing pains I had some business bullying happening at the time so it was like it it was more enticing for me to expand and move away from it all and and just stay focused on my business and I truly was the problem there was I didn't have outside sales set up all my customers were coming from local and out of town. I didn't have wholesale accounts and things like that. So I wasn't ready for a 6,000 square foot building in that way. So once we got in it, I was like, I got to get this built. And I was trying to get wholesale going, fundraiser, anything I could do to keep the building. Well, I wasn't attached to the building. I was, I was you know, one of my business to survive. So we moved again. And uh, I'm, I'm going to try not to lose my train of thought on this because I had something good to say there. But... Um, I got to thank Heidi. Um, I did. I lost my train of thought on that. It was going to be really good too. <laughs> yeah. hey, It'll we're, come back. It'll come back. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're creative. Um, we're creative. We're creative. This happen. Yeah, when I watched this interview after it's over, I'm like, oh, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> we can edit um, it in. <laughs> yeah. Um, shoot. I don't know. It'll come well, back to me. It was something somewhere. about you find the customers. You you're at the the thing that you know. If you have a great product, customer. I know what it was. Okay, good. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. I, I was saying I, I feel it is my duty to talk about this. Um, you know, I think as artists, and I don't even hardly like to use the word spiritual anymore. I think prophetic is more of the word I like to choose to use now. But we. We have an intuitiveness about, you know, our visions and, and uh, we, we have a sensitivity to it. And so I kept seeing a number, 411, that's the name of my 
eyebrow business, eyebrows 411. I look at it now as information. And, um, but I kept questioning, you know, like people say they see 11, 11 on the clock or whatever. Why am I seeing this number all the time? You know, and I'm a researcher. I want to know. So I look, I look up and I find a book and it was, uh, it was a numbers book, um, uh, numbers from one zero to 999 and, and, you know, positive affirmations. That book became a part of my life for about four years. I kept it. And at some point, it looked so tattered. I looked at it and I thought, why doesn't my Bible look like this? You know, something didn't feel right about it. And until last year, I, you know, I knew a new birth was about to happen. And I, I was thinking it was going to be in my art, which I still think that it's going to be in my art. But it was in my faith, too. I almost feel like a born-again born Christian. I was born a Christian. My, my parents raised me and. um Church of Christ, and anyways, uh, so Jesus, I'm Jesus team all the way. But when these books, you know, when you when you hear the words um, ascended masters or law of attraction and all of that, no, it's not. There's it's it's one book. You know, God's not of confusion, and it was very confusing. It was like I was constantly trying to figure out why was I seeing these you know numbers all the time and. I ended up finally just putting it with scripture, you know. Um, but the thing is, I prayed last year for God to reveal the truth to me. And girl, when he when you pray that one prayer <laughs> earnestly from your heart, and the truth is revealed to you, things change. It totally disconnected me from the earthly life, really, you know. Um, and that was what, you know, my business, I was striving to succeed. I was going to Dallas market. I was buying Christmas ornaments to do, you know, Christmas trees in the shop and just running myself to exhaustion. Mm -hmm. You know, of course I enjoyed it. I did, but I wasn't getting a paycheck for a long time either because I kept reinvesting in the business. And at some point I exhausted myself. Um, so I feel like, He's got me wanting to paint right now. And that's another reason I found you because I, YouTube is my hangout. <laughs> I hang out on YouTube a lot. Um, and I do watch a lot of uh, artists, you know, tutorials. Roses are my favorite. I'm determined to perfect the rose. You know, it's so challenging to me and they're just beautiful. Um, but I feel like, you know, that this is my faith walk and it's going to come through my art somehow to help others to, go back to the one and only true God, you know, that makes, I hope all that makes sense. Um, yes. Yeah. Bring this up. I feel like I'm, I'm not being obedient. So no, it totally makes sense. And, and Shanna, I went for many, many years where I did not talk about any of my bankrupts. I was so ashamed and so embarrassed and felt like I wasn't worthy of any success ever again, because how dare I not pay off my debts? You know, I was taught, pay them off. You know, all these things that kept me stuck and kept me, you know, not shining for God or, or being right. what he wants me to be. And so finally, once I released that and I started talking about it openly and being like, everybody has their story. Everybody has money issues. Everybody has health issues. Everybody has, you know, the, the crazy family member, you know, sometimes that's me, they say, you know, like yeah. everybody has the same thing. And I think that's what bonds us is humanity is we're all going through the same type of thing. So for you to like openly share, um, I don't know what it does for it's you. Hard. For me, it's, it was, it was so hard at first, but yes. the, more, the more I did it, the more I realized it wasn't just me sharing to, oh, bring the attention to me. It was me sharing out of, like you said, obedience. Somebody right. else needs to hear this and know that they're not the only ones going through it. So I just want to honor you and thank you for being so transparent right now because that's a big thing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you, you definitely inspired me to do that when I saw your video. on And in, in, I've watched it several times and I tear up watching it <laughs> because I think we have that in common together. And so you're honestly the first person that I've, I'm being, you know, sharing this with. And I'm, I know it's the time. It's the right time. Um, when I told you earlier this morning and I was up at 630 this morning, God's just like putting scriptures in my head, you know, and one of them, 
I looked at it real carefully this morning uh, that I always think about is um, Luke eight sixteen. No man, when he has lighted, lighted a can, I got to read my own handwriting, lighted a candle, cover it with a vessel or put it, putteth it under a bed, but setteth on a candlestick that they which enter in may see the light. And, you know, a couple of things that I take from it with my journey is I prayed for truth. God revealed truth to me. Now he expects me not, I don't want to use the word expect. It sounds he's, he's given me the gift through grace of the knowledge of knowing the truth. And for me not to share it dishonors him. And so that's why, you know, I'm, I'm hoping others understand what I'm trying to say here that, um, my, the, I burned that number book, let's just say, but the Bible is the only book that I go to. I keep it in my, uh, open in my house next to my bed. I have one in my car. <laughs> that is my book I go to. And that's where we're going to get our inspirations from the true truth, you know, of inspiration. So, and on top of that, another way that I receive it, you know, there was, there's another scripture uh, I'd like to share. Oh, Heidi. Uh-oh. We lost you. There, there we are. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Matthew 7, 6. Uh, Never cast your pearls before swine or lest they stomp on you. And I, I know you read my interview from that girl I tagged you in. And I'm sure that you saw a part in there where there was some uh, sabotaging happening in my business through a couple of my employees and a business owner. And, you know, it also makes me think of the scripture, you know, we got to love our enemies and pray for them. And I didn't understand it at the time because my heart was innocently pure and in wanting to show love to these people. And, you know, I got stomped with one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've so, had that happen a time or two. It hurts. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so that, that it's like when your light is shining and that happens, you want to go hide under your bed and you don't want to shine your light anymore. That is not okay. That is not what God wants us to do. That's what Satan wants us to do. Mm -hmm. So that's another big part of why I want to share, you know, my true story because, you know, we're going to always run into that out there, but we have to have the armor of God to get through it, you know, and at the time, and I always prayed to God, Jesus was my, Number one, even when I had that number book, because it says in there, whoever your ascended master is, is it Jesus? Is it Buddha? Is it this? I thought it was okay, you know, but we don't need that. We don't need all the confusion. Um, so anyways, I hope all that's making sense. <laughs> yes. And, and I know, you know, a lot of people do, um, you know, I've been attacked several times, a lot of, on a daily basis now, you know, cause the more, the more you put yourself out there, the more that, um, people see you and the more that it's right. easy for, especially in today's time, you know, somebody can sit behind a computer and they forget that we're real people. They forget yeah. that we're somebody's daughter. They forget that we're somebody's mother. They forget that we're somebody's sister or somebody's mm -hmm. aunt, you know, they forget all that. And they, it's easier for them to sit there and not take action and then just write a dirty mean thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I, I get comments, you know, on, you know, YouTube videos and, and stuff like that. And, you know, and I've been like, really, I had, um, I had a major attack a few years back and, um, and it was my first major attack. And I remember just crying for two days and praying and praying and like, God, where do you want me to go? You know, what am I supposed to do? Like, I thought that was exactly where you wanted me to be. And, mm -hmm. uh, and it was weird cause I, I cried for two days and then I, um, through prayer and through knowing that he had my back, it was like I released all the anger from those people. I was able to go, okay, God is just redirecting me. He knew mm -hmm. that I would stay on that path because I love doing that. He knew that, you know, it was just going to take, he knows what it takes to get me to redirect. And so it was like two days and I was over it. And, you know, my friends, even my mom, they're like still mad at these people. And I'm, like, I'm like, it's okay. You know, I'm not mad. I have forgiven them and I have redirected and it's totally fine. And so I think, um, the faster you realize that, that, you know, anytime you do something different other than the norm and you're not, you know, keeping your head down and staying in this one lane and not touching or talking to anybody, you know, as long as you're doing that, like, you know, you're probably still going to get attacked. I mean, it just does not matter what you yes. do. 
You so, will. Um, so right. yeah, I think just, you know, um, you being strong and, and knowing that, you know, it's okay. And success, you know, there's, there's a joke, you know, like, um, my husband was laughing. He's like, oh my gosh, Heidi, you made it. You have haters. And so, <laughs> yay, it's a joke. That's true. I'm another right. though. So, yeah. you know, I used I, to say hurt people hurt people, but I kind of turned it into mean people hurt people. Some people are just mean spirited, but I think it's because they have a veil over their eyes and they just, their hearts just don't, you know, that's why we got to pray for them. <laughs> but yeah. it happens. Yeah, it does. It does happen. And it's just the way we handle it. You can't, um, yeah. you can't go into a, a Facebook, you know, conversation war. That does nothing. Right. So, right. I so agree. Let's, um, let's shift gears a little bit. So, um, okay. you know, what is your, like, what's your big dream? I know you feel like you're, you know, wanting to paint and you're painting and doing an awesome job. And I know you have your, your you. permanent makeup stuff. Um, but what's kind of like your big dream or what do you see yourself in the next few years doing? Goodness. Um, well, I hopefully debt will be paid off <laughs> and that's coming. I know it is. And we're doing good. Actually, we've gotten a lot of that chiseled down, but, um, I, I feel like God has opened up my creativity again. The block is, is now disappearing. It's moving. Um, suddenly I understand color theory a little bit. I don't know with permanent makeup, we really have to understand that. So I really studied on, you know, with the permanent makeup side of things with pigments and skin and all of that. Um, but when I picked up the paintbrush that, that rabbit I painted a, a week ago, I created my own color wheel. I'm like, where is this coming from? You know? And it was just making sense to me, warms and cools. And um, so I, I'm kind of hoping that I see my art changing and that I'm, you know, finally not being so intimidated, intimidated by a blank canvas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm excited to see. I don't know what's going to come out, but I think it's going to be something pretty awesome. I'm just looking forward to that, to see what God has in store through my art, you know. And, I, you know, I do like to paint. I've always liked to paint. But like you said, I, you know, I do a lot of different things. I like to work with uh, textures, um, you know, clay, sculpy clay. And uh, so there's many sides of me that could teach some fun, interesting classes to diversify it a little bit, you know, but still I recognize when I do paint on a canvas or even I like to do big murals, actually, I like to do big stuff. Um, I get lost in it. Like I don't even think about eating, you know. It's very <laughs> me too. <laughs> So, uh, that's what I'm hoping for uh, in that, you know, I don't know, we, we stay healthy in our household and, you know, yeah. look forward to seeing what my son does with himself. And Yeah, that's so cool. I love that because, I mean, I don't know, For it seems like just the smile on your face and the light in your eye, like, I don't know about you, but for me, like creativity and art and painting just, just gives me hope, you know? Yes. It, oh, it, just, it just gives me hope. And so, mm -hmm. so let's leave the listeners and viewers with some hope today. So what is your advice for those um, that want to leave, you know, lead a creative life? What, what could you tell them? Well, I watched your interview with Pixie, your daughter. She's <laughs> precious by the way. And um, she said a couple of things and I was going to take notes and write them down. So I'm hoping I can remember, but it was really cute for her to, give the advice that she gave because it was really good advice you know, oh, don't, be you. Afraid of the glue, don't be afraid of the glue, hot glue and <laughs> it was so cute but uh I think y'all talked about don't be afraid to mess up because we do I have made the best inventions with my candles through my biggest mistakes wasted wax you know but I'm like Edward Scissorhands honestly like and then I got this mess but I got this create this beautiful creation sometimes we have to just put our hands to work, put our hands to work and don't be afraid of messing up. I think that's some of the best advice that could be offered out there for an artist because oh, yeah. you know, I think people are intimidated by it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I never truly called myself an artist until last year because I didn't think I could or I was because I didn't go to school for it, you know? And I'm like, you know, 
I, I, maybe I am an artist. <laughs> Does that make sense? Have you ever? Had oh my gosh. I come across so many people that are like, because I don't have an art degree, I can't be an artist. And right. yeah, there's something, I don't know if it's something in society or as far as like you need this certificate or you need something like this, but, but there's so much, like you said, YouTube is your go-to. I mean, if I want to be a guitar player this week, I could go to YouTube and say, hours and have some I mean I wouldn't be like a massive guitar player but I could learn a few chords you know so yeah. it's like there's so many opportunities for how to learn now and right. I find that a lot of people really struggle with calling themselves an artist when they when they really are an artist and then once right. they accept it's almost like a shift happens once they accept that um, mm -hmm. you know title or you know part of their identity not that you know we should hold our identity and what we do but you know, once they accept that kind of as like, yeah, you know, it gives them this confidence. And then you're like, yeah, yeah I'm an artist. Let's do this, you know. So, so that's really yeah. cool to know that. So it's just been the past few years since you've called yourself an artist? Probably since last year. And um, I'm okay with it now. I know that's what my, my gift is. And I'm, we are to use our gifts to shine our light. Don't let anyone dim your light. That would be my other advice. And I also loved that you talked about in one of your um, videos, the whole starving artist thing. I said that even this year, I'm a starving artist. When someone says something to me about, Oh, you're doing, you're, you know, you did so good on that or whatever. I said, yeah, but I'm a starving artist. I am not saying that again, Heidi, because it doesn't have to be that way. I agree with you on that. And I'm going to watch that video again because I think I just watched it quickly, but, um, it resonated with me because you know why not make a living at doing art doing something you love that's what we have our gifts for yeah and words are so powerful and um, if you're telling yourself that I'm a starving artist I'm this I'm that I mean you take on what you're telling yourself you know because right. You're, right. You know, you're 80% up here is half the battle. You know, you got to right. get through all this mess to be able to do what you want to do on the outside. And so, so yeah, I'm glad you, you've noticed that and you're not a starving artist. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Uh, any final like, words you want to leave people with? Um, I'm trying, there was another interview you did. Uh, oh, with I, I don't remember who she, her name, what her name was. She was a teacher, um, maybe in Colorado. Um, Sorts of the M, Marjorie. Oh, Margie Kemper. Well, I, yes, um, I think she was talking about, and I totally agree with her. I've always felt this way. Um, that there's room for all of us. There's there, there's no need for competition. One thing I struggle with though with my business is I do believe that we sometimes have to have trade secrets in, in what we do. And that's one thing that I maintain with the candle cottage. You know, we developed our candle formula. It's our secret formula, like a secret chef recipe. Um, so here I am since 2014, I've been closed. I've got all this equipment here that we're considering even just getting rid of. But I love making candles. I just know I don't want to do it as a business anymore. I don't want to be the candle maker. If I do it, if, if the blueberry comes out again, I'm going to partner with a company that can pour it for me and I just, they can order from them. You know, we do a contract, whatever. But I could have a really awesome YouTube channel teaching people how to make pie candles and cake candles, you know, things like that. So I've ha I'm trying to, figure out a way around that because you know I'm still paying business debt it's like I don't feel ready to give my secrecy fully away mm -hmm. does that make sense so oh, yeah. okay I'm hoping something that might be another answer to your question of what the future holds for me and it I do feel something I have a YouTube channel actually that I planned on doing that with it's called making things beautiful and it has no videos on it yet. <laughs> That's okay. It's all it's all stepping stones. I mean, you know, you yes, you can lead you know lead this creative life, but we can't expect it to all happen overnight. And so many people think that wow, if something doesn't happen right now, you know, oh, but, but if you just take small steps every day, you know, and then you look back on your life from ten years ago to where you are now, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, we all. We all have so much time in this world, and I, I want to spend it doing something I love, you know, and, right. 
And so, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's really, that's a great idea, by the way. And um, when we get off this interview, I'll, I'll tell you a few tips. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, you've inspired me to want to do it again. So I know, you know, you use your cell phone, I think, to do your videos, right? A lot. Oh, all my lives, all that kind of stuff is cell Yeah, I don't have to have all this fancy equipment, right? You know, so that's one of those fear blocks. You know, I'm, I'm not doing something because I think I don't have everything set up yet, and that's, we don't have to do that, y'all. Yeah. That's another word of advice. Just use what you have. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know we could talk all day long. I keep, you know, making it longer for you, but um, I've enjoyed this. I have. Oh, I so appreciate you being here. And these interviews are really just to kind of give the viewers, you watching, listening, whatever it may be, hope. Um, I just feel like there's so many times in this world that um, – we think that, you know, we can't do this or we can't be an artist or we can't make money doing art. And that is so not true. There is a whole crap load of people out there making money doing art. And so I just wanted you to hear it from somebody else who is out there making it happen um, and know that, you know, there's still fears. There's still, you know, life is messy. And um, if everybody's gonna, you know, get on here and pretend like they're perfect, you know, we know that's a lie. We know that's not um, real life. And so I just really wanted to show y'all um, from another perspective, you know, somebody else, what she's going through and what she's been through. And I just am so, so honored and appreciative, um, Shanna, that you would share all of this stuff with us. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for giving me the platform to do it. Oh, you're welcome. And guys, I'm going to be sending out a few more interviews. So um, watch your inbox and let me know what you think. Reply and um, or put a comment below, but let me know what you think of these and if you want to see more. So y'all have a great day and we will see you next time. Bye guys. Thanks, Bye.